On today's video, we're going to be going over my first video of the preventive maintenance steps you can take throughout the winter to make sure your unit is going to be fine for the next season. So today we're going to be going over how to lubricate your wheel bearings. This is a very simple process, but has some kinks that's important for you guys to understand. So without further ado, let's give her. Hello YouTube land, welcome back to the channel. I'm Eddie and this is my channel Windy Therapy. This is where I talk about motorcycles, camping and some outdoor adventures. So if you're new in here, welcome. And if you're not, thanks so much for coming back folks. So before we start, let me just highlight uh, the equipment that you're gonna need to do this job nicely and safely. First and foremost, you need something to block the wheel, right? The wheel on the other side. So this is what I have. It can be a piece of two by four, whatever you have handy, but make sure you block the wheel on the other side. You're gonna need gloves because this is gonna get a little bit messy and uh, shop towels is always nice to have. And of course, you're gonna need uh, the grease gun. I have a larger one, so I'm gonna be using this smaller gun and I will show you guys how to actually assemble and put the cartridge because a lot of people can uh, make a mistake and put the cartridge upside down so I'll show you how to get that stuff done properly uh, we're gonna need a screwdriver and finally which is not a must a floor jack and I'll show you guys later why it's nice to have a floor jack but that's basically what you're gonna need to get this job done. Okay, folks, now let's assemble this uh, small grease gun. Like I said before, you don't need to use that large one, a small one will suffice. So first things first, let's remove the top cap. So this system is spring-loaded, so we have to pull the plunger in a little bit and we'll lock in place. Now I have to make sure you're putting the grease cartridge in the right direction. If you look closely, you're gonna find an arrow somewhere telling you which way the cartridge has to be inserted. In this case, the arrow is right here on the top. So first thing we need to do is remove the cap. Then you're gonna see that the grease is exposed. Then we need to remove this foil or this plastic stuff in the back here. It's, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit messy, but that's okay. That's why we have gloves. So let me remove this stuff. And now we're gonna put into the plunger in the direction of the arrow. Remember, right here on the top? So we're gonna go like so. And now we can put the top of, put the top piece on. Nice and tight. Get a piece of rag just to clean it up. Minimize the mess. Now everything's nice and clean. Now we can turn again the plunger to put some pressure into the system, right? Now the gun is ready to go. One point that's important to know, instead of going into the grease nipple and just jamming the gun into it, remember that you have to undo this piece a little bit to release the jaws and will make it easier to put it in. And then when you put it in, you make it tight and it's gonna work just fine. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So now is the time to uh, put the grease gun into the nipple, the grease nipple. Like I said before, just you have to undo this piece a little bit to allow you to get into it. And then you just tighten it up, 
make sure it's nice and tight so now you just need to give a couple pumps to start feeling some resistance because that means the grease went all the way through this plunger and now I feel that it's a little bit tougher so I can sense that the grease is being pumped so I can see some grease coming out if you put too much pressure or too much grease other than becoming messy you now you can damage the seal of the bearings so that's all we need let's just unscrew this this piece again like I said to allow the jaws to release the, the grease nipple and we can pull it out I can see the new grease all the way around so it tells me that I have enough and again you don't want to fill it up all the way to the top you just want to see some new grease showing a good tip for you guys is there are different grease colors there's black there's red and there's blue the grease is basically the same the color just helps you to see when the new grease is in place uh, in this case the original grease is red and now I can see the darker which is almost black or graphite color of the new grease all the way around so that shows to me that the grease is properly in place right and that's that's how it takes now we just need to put the little cover just like so and that's done right so it's a very simple step to make sure your wheels and the bearings will last longer so before we finish let me go over five important points that you need to be mindful about number one I'm not a mechanic number two uh, a typical RV or pop-up trailer the large ones you need to uh, lubricate the bearings they recommend between 10,000 to 12,000 miles however in a small pop-up camper like an XL a Minimate or so the small wheels are turning way faster and more often so you need to do it more frequently uh, I couldn't really find what's recommended for smaller smaller tires like those eight inches uh, like I have on my XL but I'm doing more or less every 5,000 miles third look in the video looks like I'm pumping like there's no tomorrow so the reality is no I didn't pump too much is because when you buy a brand new grease gun uh, first of all the cartridge doesn't come full all the way to the top it's almost like a three-quarter so you have to pump to make sure you have grease all the way around all the way to the tip so it takes a while to do it so that's the reason why it looks like I was pumping like crazy but it's just to make sure I have grease all the way to the top fourth you don't need to put a lot of grease actually if you try to put too much you can wreck the seal of the bearing so typically if you're doing every 5,000 miles or so all you need is to go like two maybe three pumps all you want to see is the old grease being pushed out a little bit all the way around that silver uh, grease cap fifth you might find people online saying why should I lubricate the bearings because the bearings are not consuming the grease well that's true to a point but it's very wrong on the other like this is more or less saying that you don't need to do oil changes because the engine is not consuming the oil so it's kind of a little bit crazy to say that but a lot of people are saying that don't lubricate the bearings which I think is pretty stupid so the reason why you do it an oil change or to put grease into the bearings is to make sure that the new lubricant has the new properties because over time with heat uh, the, the, doesn't matter what kind of lubricant they start losing their properties and the main one you need to avoid is excessive heat so that's why you have to do oil changes that's why you have to put grease in a, in a trailer whatever that is any kind of equipment that needs grease you have to do it every so often 
not because the grease disappears, it's because it loses its properties. So that's it, my friends. I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to be bringing more and more videos about how to maintain your Leisure Light Excel or it can be a Minimate. I'm going to try to make my videos a little bit more generic. Um, this is the first of many videos that I'm going to be sharing throughout the winter to make sure your unit is ready to go in the springtime. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that really helps me. If you have any questions, just write it down in the comments area down below. And if you like this video, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe on this corner here. And uh, as always, until next time, be good, be safe, and let's keep the rubber side down. Ciao.